Now, dairy prices have hit a record high, soaring 14%. The increase is largely due to the high demand for skim milk powder. Good news for many farmers still struggling, no doubt, in drought conditions. I'm joined now by Connor English, Chief Executive at Federated Farmers. Hi, Connor. Thanks for joining us this morning. G'day, Rachel. How are you? Good, thank you. Why do you think uh, the rise in the dairy price, is it purely linked to the situation with the drought here? Well, look, what we've seen on the global dairy trade auction is that volumes being offered by Fonterra have dropped quite dramatically. You know, at the beginning of February, there was 37,000 tonnes uh, on offer on that auction. Uh, the auction that we've just had, there was just under 14,000 tonnes. So there's been quite a contraction in the volume, and I guess there's been a corresponding increase in price. And is it chiefly markets like China who are concerned, perhaps, that there won't be enough to go around? Well, look, there'll be, yeah, anyone who wants to buy off that uh, system obviously is concerned uh, that there's a shortage because there is a shortage. And if you look in other uh, dairy growing regions of the world, you know, they've also come under pressure too with, with, with drought and, and low cow numbers. So uh, there is a bit of constraint on the supply side and, and uh, thankfully that is pushing the price up. And we'll touch a little bit on the meat schedule at the moment, but I just want to focus on dairy for a bit longer. Is the, is the dairy auction price likely to rise? Is that feasible? It could rise further, do you think? Uh, well, look, potentially it, potentially it could, uh, but it's the nature of it too, Rachel, is it could drop 14% uh, next time too. Mm. Uh, but, but I think that the trend is certainly uh, positive, and, and that's simply because a lot of farmers in New Zealand have dried off their cows, they're not producing milk, this time last year they were, and therefore there's less product on offer, and, and, and uh, thankfully that price is higher. And so with this price being higher, does that in a sense cancel out the financial impact of the drought for dairy farmers and some of those who've had to dry off their cows? early? Uh, look, it'll be positive, uh, more positive than otherwise. Uh, I certainly don't think it'll cancel it out, but it certainly is a, is a positive way to finish the season. OK, let's talk about uh, some of the sheep and beef farmers because they're not having such a good time of it really, are they? What's the meat schedule doing at the moment? Well, it's come back, of course, and what, what's happened there is that because uh, a lot of farmers are destocking and they're having to send their stock uh, to the works because they can't uh, feed them, they don't have the grass to feed them, uh, and uh, the works are saying, well, OK, heck, there's a lot of stock coming our way, so we don't need to pay as much uh, as we did, say, this time last year, and so the price that they're paying the farmers is dropping. And that's having a real impact because you've got uh, sheep farmers, for example, that were selling lambs for over $100 last year, uh, this time last year, are, are getting you know, $50 this time this year, and that's a real big cash flow impact on those businesses. And so when it comes to the international demand for, say, our lamb, uh, what does that mean? Who are they getting it for a cheaper price to, or is someone sort of taking a bit of a cut in the middle here? Well, I think uh, if you've been to buy some lamb at the supermarket uh, here in uh, New Zealand, the price of lamb ha has actually dropped in the supermarket. Uh, so it's come back, and, and I suspect that that's what's happened uh, in, in overseas markets as well. M my counterpart, who runs the equivalent of Federated Farmers in the UK, is emailing me complaining that New Zealand lamb is being sold for half what uh, UK lamb is over there. So I think the consumer's getting a bit of benefit, but also I think the middlemen are, are getting a bit of a benefit out of that as well. OK, the expats are enjoying it. A nice roast lamb. <laughs> OK, uh, the Overseas Investment Office, um, I just want to touch on this, has given um, two Chinese-owned dairy companies approval, essentially, to set up uh, milk processing plants. I think one's in Pocono, south of Auckland, one's in south Canterbury. What's your reaction to that? Well, look, um, I, I guess sooner or later it was going to going to happen. I, I think there'll be some mixed views about it. But, I mean, a good thing, I guess, is that you've got uh, some new players coming in who are linked to big markets, and that provides an opportunity for our dairy farmers. Uh, I, I guess on the, on the uh, concern side would be, you know, is this the start of fragmentation in the dairy industry like we've seen uh, in the meat industry? And, and so I guess it's sort of a watch this space. Uh, but it's good to see new investment coming in. Uh, and, and hopefully Hopefully uh, these new companies will pay farmers more than, than what Fonterra will and that will put more pressure on Fonterra to perform in their market. I mean, one of the challenges they've got is to add more value to the product that they have. OK, because it hasn't been determined yet whether uh, those plants will buy their milk from Fonterra or from other uh, supplies. What would be your preference? What's best, do you think, for the market? Well, 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 look, I'm not... I mean, they'll come to whatever commercial arrangements they are. What we do know, though, is that with the Fonterra shares, uh, you know, being a lot more expensive than what they were before uh, they were listed on the market, uh, is that there's a real incentive now for farmers to sell their Fonterra shares and go to a new supplier like these Chinese. And so Fonterra have... Um, not, not, maybe it's not quite an own goal, but uh, they've certainly provided an incentive for farmers to stop supplying 
them milk and supply other people. And we'll see what happens there. We run indeed. Okay, Connor English, appreciate your time this morning from Federated Farmers. Thank you.